Hey everyone, welcome, and tonight Offer Vault is bringing you a very, very interesting couple of fellows from Ads2G. Now, I'm, I'm hoping I pronounced that correctly, but the key to remember here is that these guys are all about Facebook ad optimization, and our guests tonight are Johnny Deo and Troy Simpson, and as I understand, if you sit back, pay attention, and... Make sure you either make some notes or tune in and watch this again if you miss it because we are recording it because they're going to give you some inside information on how to make use of Facebook ads. And as I understand, gentlemen, it's a very popular subject that is more often than not not properly utilized. Is that a fair statement to make at this time in the game? Oh, yeah, definitely. And, it, you know, it just keeps changing all the time as well. So um, you really have to keep up on all the latest developments and you know, all the changes in policy and, and uh, new ad formats and that kind of thing. And, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of what we're going to talk a bit about today uh, as, well as, as well as our app. If I can ask a dumb question, because that's the only ones I know how to ask, ads on Facebook are not related to Google Ads, AdSense, and all the other stuff we've been doing. This is its own entity, right? And you have to play it careful. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean not just... Not just in the format of the ads, but you know the way that that you actually run your campaigns. Uh, you know the mindset of the users. Uh, you know that are sitting on there playing playing Farmville and, and that kind of thing, as opposed to you know searching for something to buy. Uh, it's it's everything is completely different, and and you know a lot of a lot of affiliates and, and marketers in general try to apply search strategies to to Facebook. And uh, you know it's it's because it's completely different. It doesn't just doesn't work like that. Um, so you know that's that's kind of one thing I wanted to touch on today was you know how uh, sort of maybe a better strategy on on how you can you know utilize Facebook traffic in that. I agree, Johnny. And I think one of the big differences is with search. You you know a user's intent. If they search for uh, buying a mobile phone, you know what they're looking for. Whereas on Facebook. You have really advanced information about their demographics, who they are, but not their intent of what they're looking to do. That's right. So um, <clears throat> I'll show you what, uh, what we're going to talk about today. Uh, this is just a quick overview of what we're going to go over. We're just going to introduce ourselves and talk a bit about uh, new developments with Facebook, uh, you know, and upcoming changes. And we're going to take a look at the at the app in detail and how you can use it to, you know, to, to create your campaigns and optimize on on Facebook. And uh, uh, finally, we're going to take a look at some more advanced topics like bid automation and and uh, scheduling your ads. And uh, we're going to take a look at our our promotion that we're running right now. So Troy, do you want to talk a bit about? Uh, some of the some of the latest news with uh, Facebook ads. Absolutely. So uh, Facebook ads have been changing drastically over the last few months. Uh, Facebook just launched their new timeline uh, for users, and they're planning on uh, really moving into mobile. Uh, and the way ads have traditionally worked has been: you see a small ad on the right hand side with a picture, some some text description, and you could place this ad, target it and split test it, and that was the best way to, to optimize. Uh, now ads are moving more towards a social ad from this traditional banner ad system that they had, where you can advertise to people who like your product or like your, your page and friends of them. And it doesn't necessarily have to be your page, just you can, you can target based on uh, any social actions. Uh, so they're moving more towards having things like sponsored stories or a story about a friend liking uh, something like Coca-Cola. You click through there, you're brought to their Facebook page, not a third-party site. So with the shift to mobile and the shift to timeline, they're really trying to push forward this agenda. Now, there still is a very strong presence of third-party ads on Facebook, and we'll talk about that a lot today, but that's sort of the future direction of where Facebook is shifting. Uh, Facebook has also added some new affiliate restrictions. Uh, API users, uh, which our tool is over the Facebook ad API, 
so affiliates have specific restrictions now, including they're not allowed to have any free trials and a few more res other restrictions just to to tighten the the uh, tighten up the the ads content that it's been getting through. Yeah, so a bit more on on the social ads uh, side of it uh, for for affiliates and, and marketers on Facebook. Um, I, I think the the biggest change is just going to be uh, moving your content from your landing page uh, to Facebook. Uh, that's really what they want. They want more content on there. They want their users to stay on Facebook. And uh, uh, for for affiliates, I think that just means that. Um, they have to learn how to how to create pages and and you know get generate traffic that way um, by you know word of mouth people commenting and promoted posts and that kind of thing as opposed to just sending them to uh, you know to a third party site and and uh, and converting from there so so it's really just a matter of of, of where the content is and I, I definitely think there's going to be opportunities to. To uh, you know, to make money off of uh, on these these type of ads as well, um, and uh, we'll, we'll take a look at that a little bit later. Absolutely, and there's just a report uh, by Comscore this week that just uh, went over how effective these new social ads are, and as you can imagine, uh, seeing some something about one of your friends in your in your time in your uh, newsfeed, it is, is very highly effective and it's very influential. So I think there's a lot of opportunity there uh, to, to, to have great conversion rates, higher click-through rates than the traditional uh, lower click-through rates of the banner ads. Yeah, and and like always, you know, with with new new developments, there's always room for people to get in early uh, and you know take advantage of of, of any new opportunities in that. Um, that's that's usually the, you know good time to get in when. When uh, you know things are things are still wide open and you know hasn't been uh, completely saturated, you know, with all the same everybody doing the same idea. So now is a good time uh, uh, to to take a look at Facebook ads if, if you know if if you've done it before in the past and 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 your campaigns have you moved them elsewhere. Uh, I think with with the new mobile ads that are coming out, uh, it's it's well worth taking a look at. And seeing if how you can you know move your campaigns on onto uh, onto their you know their mobile ad platform and that. So I just wanted to give you guys a quick intro uh, about who we are and, and, and what we're doing here. Um, I've been involved with Facebook and uh, Facebook ads basically since the very beginning. I started writing Facebook apps uh, when that when that API first opened up and I've been advertising on Facebook since the beginning uh, I had a uh, an ad, ad placement tool uh, a couple of years ago that, was, that became pretty popular uh, and that led to this new project Ads2G which is uh, a Facebook ads API tool so basically it'll help you manage your your ads on Facebook and optimize So it's a desktop application. Uh, you download it. Uh, you can use it on Mac or, or PC or whatever you use. And basically how it works is it, is it hooks up with your Facebook ads account. And then we can do interesting things like uh, automatically optimizing your, your bids or placing ads on your behalf or scheduling your ads, uh, all that good stuff. Uh, some of the features that that are very useful. Uh, you can manage all your offers in, in projects, so uh, it, it will help you organize your campaigns a lot better than than just you know using the campaigns on your your, your ad account. Uh, in the projects, you can you can save your creatives, your landing pages. Uh, you can have all of your stats rolled up into that into that project, so you can easily switch from one campaign to the next as you're working throughout the day. Um, We'll take a little closer look at that later. Uh, split testing is also very powerful in the app. You can easily split test your creatives and 
any uh, targeting options that you have and uh, there's there's a, many different options for uh, reporting you can take a look at uh, you know how your creatives are converting uh, different, different age groups demographics locations um, and pretty much anything you can whatever whatever you can think of you can uh, you know pull pull data from your accounts uh, and, and take a look at it in a you know easy to read format here and also there's conversion tracking uh, so we've sort of designed that to work with whatever third-party tools you're using I don't know if you guys using PPV lab or tracking to to uh, Google Analytics whatever whatever you're using uh, this can easily integrate with that mm -hmm. and we can track multiple types of conversions on your landing page uh, and we'll take a, a look at that as well uh, pretty soon so uh, I'm just going to show you guys a, a quick example uh, this is this is a lead gen campaign it's a solar energy uh, lead gen uh, just simple landing page that has a paper call and a, and a lead form and I'm just going to show you guys how the app works and how this campaign is created and all the testing and optimization that I've done with it. So finally here we'll take a look at the app. Uh, what we're looking at right here is the, the project is opened up in a tab here and here are all the creatives that I've saved in, in the project. So we can use these anytime, anytime you want to create new ads you can just go back to your saved uh, creatives and uh, and use them or add new ones as you need. Here we have conversion actions, which, uh, like I was saying before, you can track multiple types here. Uh, so this this campaign, uh, we're looking at a, a lead, twelve dollars. Uh, the paper call lead, fourteen dollars. And you can also track, uh, you know, click throughs on different links and that kind of thing, just for your own tracking purposes. And here we have a, a list of landing pages that we're using. Um, I'll take take a look at how conversion tracking works, but basically you just insert a token into your URL, and that will track everything. What ad the 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 user uh, clicked on to get to your landing page, and that's basically how everything is tracked. You just pass that token through, and and post that back to us when you get a conversion, and uh, and that's pretty much how everything is tracked. Uh, we also have uh, uh, alerts, uh, which is just notifications on on what's happening in your account. So this will show you, um, you know, any any ads that you have approved or disapproved. Uh, it'll show you um, ads that have stopped running because your your bid is too low, or uh, different different types of performance related alerts here. So this is a good starting point when you go into your to your campaign. You want to see what's going on? Just take a look at this, and and it'll show you. Um, uh, what's what's been happening in your in your project here, and this is a, just a list of your saved audiences or targeting. So you can you can save any uh, targeting that you commonly use in here. So let's take a look at uh, how you can how we set up uh, your ads. So here's a list of here's a list of uh, ads that were created previously. Let's open this up. Take a look at it. Now, when you're creating ads, it's uh, you just you go through the same process each time. You have these these uh, fields here that are you might recognize from Facebook. A lot of a lot of the same thing. You're setting your budget and your 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 default bid. And that we also have options for uh, scheduling your ads, so you can schedule them at certain times of the week. This is a lot. You might recognize this similar layout in Google AdWords. Uh, you can you know you can pause it different days of the week so let's say I want to pause it those days uh, you can also set a specific bid here so let's say I want to these days I want to raise my bid to to a certain amount here there you go and uh, so let's see what else we got here you can also promote uh, any Facebook apps or or um, uh, pages 
that you that you want to promote here. And then the next step here is uh, setting up your audiences. So let's say I want to use I want to use this this audience here that I that I've previously saved, and let's select some creatives. There we go. So I have a list of twelve creatives that I that I had before, and uh, let's just pick one of our one of our campaigns. Landing page. There we go. So this final step, this just shows you a preview of all the ads that you're going to upload, as well as the the reach and the bit suggested bids. You can adjust your bids here. Uh, this just is a summary of, of what you're about to upload, and uh, and there you go. Let's click here, and and off it goes. It's uh, pretty pretty quick, basically happens instantly. And the, the next screen I want to show you is probably the most important one and this is where you're going to see all your reporting data. So it's going to show you, you we have some preset reports here. It's, you can see your, your ad performance, campaign, uh, creative performance. You can see uh, a breakdown of, of your audiences and how they're, they're doing. Uh, you can also look, look at individual dates uh, and then there's also custom reporting, which uh, you can use to do, to do custom grouping. So let's say you want to see by keyword or or by state, uh, you can you can basically mix, mix and match whatever targeting variables you have, and see exactly uh, you know what's converting and what isn't. And Johnny, why can you just quickly mention why what the importance uh, for split testing and and reporting based on those splits is uh, for for Facebook ads? Yeah, sure. Um, sorry, my uh, my internet connection is, is is going really slowly right now. That's why this the spinner keeps going. Um, so yeah, I'm sure anybody who's who's experienced with um, basic affiliate marketing in general or 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 uh, you know, running campaigns on Facebook will know that testing is is uh, you know extremely important. Getting the right creatives, finding the right audiences. Uh, it's it's a lot of it is guesswork, you know. Uh, and and you know you you might have some insights into what you're promoting, but a lot of the time it is it is just guesswork, and you just it's a matter of spending the money and testing. Uh, you know, different different uh, targeting variable testing, different creatives and, and keywords, and just finding something that works with your combination of ad and landing page and offer. So, so it's it's really like a a continual uh, process of you know launching a, a whole list of campaigns, testing, uh, analyzing the results in in the reporting here, and going back, and and it's just a, it's a never ending sort of cycle. Right, and I think that that speaks to the importance of having the built-in conversion tracking. Uh, if you place the ads on Facebook itself, there's no way of having conversion data come right back into uh, to, to your reports and seeing it right, right in line. Uh, with our tool, conversion data is available everywhere. Uh, you look at an ad, you look at a, a group of ads, uh, or you, you, you do any reports summarized by something like gender, and you can see the the con conversion data and profitability of your campaign right right there. There's no uh, you know calculating your your revenue and then trying to tie that back to your to your data. It, it's all built built right in. Yeah, I'm gonna try to uh, get get a, a better better connection going in here because this my connection conveniently just. All of a sudden, went down right now. Yes, yeah, so. your your video is uh it's been pretty choppy. All right. Well, well, let, let me go back to that uh, sure. in a minute. Uh, hopefully, hopefully the connection is, is a little better soon. So, uh, let's take a look at uh, 
some of the some of the more advanced features of, of the app. And this is this this is the kind of thing that uh, really makes it worthwhile uh, using using the app. Um, basically, I mean, what you want to do is take a lot of the the legwork out of your campaigns. You know, sitting there and looking at your your data and and messing with bids all day and that kind of thing is is not what you want to be doing. You want you want to be doing what makes you money, and that that's designing your creatives and landing pages and doing the marketing and not not just messing around on, on Facebook all day. So that's where the app comes in, and we have uh, some pretty some pretty powerful uh, bid optimization uh, tools that you can use, uh, and it basically works by uh, you set your your target CPA, and the app will basically bid to to hit that CPA. So, you know, if your payout on an offer is is thirty dollars, set your CPA to twenty dollars, and you know you're going to make ten dollar profit on on on, on each uh, you know on each conversion. So, it, it's that simple. Basically, that that's all that's going to happen. What you'll you'll find the ads that are Converting well, it'll raise the bids for them, and you're, you're going to get more volume and more and more traffic and more profit. The ads that are not doing well, it'll automatically lower the bids, and and they'll you know they'll basically just die out on you. Or you can adjust set set the CPA to a different value for those those ads. So, and then we also have uh, ad scheduling. I I just just showed you basically how that works. You can. Schedule your ads certain times of the day, depending on, on what campaign you're working on. You know, and, and dating ads uh, tend tend to only work at certain times of the day. So let's take a look here and see if this really uh, started started dying at the worst time. So let's take a look at uh, we're, we're running a promotion right now, um, and it basically is. You get the app for life uh, for for nine ninety five, and that uh, compared to uh, a lot of similar apps out there on the market, what you're looking at is is a, a minimum of you know several hundred a month, and then they charge overages on top of the minimum, so something like five percent of your spend. So they're taking a pretty big cut out of everything that you're spending on there. It doesn't even matter if you're making a profit on it or not, and uh, so comparatively, uh, I mean, it's it's completely completely different. You're you're spending you know basically a thousand for 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 life, and uh, uh, feature wise, uh, you know, there's there's many tools out there on the market that do very similar things. They are they're all they're all basically uh, there to to take all that. The, that work away from you, like I was just, like I was saying before. Uh, so feature-wise, a lot of very similar tools out there on the market. Um, however, most of them are not affiliate friendly, and most of them are very expensive, which basically, you know, prices prices you out of wanting to use it. So, um, so we found that uh, uh, this sort of pricing structure makes it a lot more friendly for you know individual. Entrepreneurs and that kind of thing, as opposed to agencies that have all kinds of money to blow on, on expensive tools and that. So, I guess let's uh, let's just uh, take a few questions if you guys have any. Let's see here. Let's see if anybody has any questions. Yeah, and uh, if anybody's interested in, in taking a look at, at the at the offer, it's at uh, adstg.com slash offer vault. Uh, you, you'll see more details there on on on, uh, on the offer and, and all the details, and you get to see uh, you know a bit more about about the features uh, of the app. Troy, is there anything you wanted to add? No, that's great, Johnny. Okay. Well, um, I guess uh, I guess we'll we'll leave it at that. Hopefully, 
hopefully uh, this was useful to you, and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll be talking to some of you soon. Great. Thanks a lot, Johnny. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you, gentlemen. And uh, we will have this uh, recording up in the members area as soon as we can. I did notice a couple of things, and I, I think it's something that people obviously have an issue about. If they get their Facebook account banned, can they get their uh, <laughs> ads to G account transferred to a new Facebook account if they get one? Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, that that's something actually that happened recently. Somebody, uh, one, one of the users that that happened. And uh, yeah, that, that that should be no problem. Um, you know, if 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 that happens, uh, you know, we don't want to leave you straight out of luck. Uh, just having having paid, it's it's not cheap. So so yeah, it, we, you know, we will we'll definitely accommodate. You know, if if you have any problems like that, uh, that's that should be no problem. And this is a Facebook authorized API, so it's not something that Facebook's going to turn around and throw away uh, on people uh, next month. You guys are working directly uh, through Facebook and with their approval, correct? Correct. And yes. there's a few questions in the in the chat about that. Uh, they were asking about other tools that that, that had some problems, and, and there were some unofficial tools uh, a few years back that Facebook has eliminated uh, because now there's an official ad API. That it works very much the same as uh, an app on Facebook. So any of the Facebook games, it's the same type of integration uh, directly with Facebook. Somebody's asking, why would a Facebook account get banned? Uh, I understand there are various reasons you can lose your account. You got any yeah, tips I mean, for people on how to avoid getting their account banned? <laughs> when it comes to ads, I, I assume that's the issue. Yeah, I mean, obviously they they want they want ads that the simplest answer is just putting ads up there that conform to their 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 policies. However, you know, however much gray area there is there, and it's always changing. Um, my suggestion is uh, try not to have too many disapproved ads. Uh, just hammering through. Ads all day that could just get disapproved uh, is is asking to get your your account banned. Um, you know, just try to try to get you keep that ratio of of, of ads approved uh, as good as possible. And um, and yeah, I mean, as long as you're being sensible and you're you're you know you're not doing anything too crazy, I think I think chances are you, you'll be safe. Um, there are there are times when you, there, there's mistakes being made and and um, it's just a matter of creating a new account. I, I don't think they're as strict as as Google as far as uh, you know banning somebody for life. So you know they're not going to track you down and and record all your IPs and everything and and never let you on their system again. I think you know if 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 you, there is a mistake or, or whatever happens, you can easily. Uh, just create a new account. And is this something that's uh, advisable for someone who's very new to the whole Facebook advertising uh, or mobile advertising in general, or is it uh, pretty much open to anybody who wants to take it on and they should be able to get through the learning curve pretty quickly? Yeah, well, I, I mean, for a beginning user, uh, some a lot of the features will make it very easy to, to get going, like it. You know, being just being able to organize everything into into a single application and all your accounts and everything uh, is very is very useful on its own. Uh, never mind, you know, the more advanced uh, optimization features and that. Um, so yeah, I mean, I would say it's. I wouldn't run any Facebook campaigns without using this app or you know something something similar at least. There's no way. It's just it's just a way better way of doing things and and you know. I, I use it all the time for, for my own my own ads, anyways. Now, in terms of uh, minimum advertising budgets, it, do you guys think that someone should start out with uh, a figure in mind and stick to it? And if it doesn't work, then rethink their strategy, or do you have to just keep pushing forward and exploring the opportunities? 
Uh, this is a good question. I, I think um, it's uh, you, as long as you're gathering data in some way, then 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 it's useful to, to keep spending. Uh, if you're just spending for the sake of hoping that uh, you know things are going to turn around soon, then then yeah, that that's that's not a good idea. You if if you're if you're buying data and you're you know you're getting valuable, uh, you're testing creatives and you know you're having more click throughs on this landing page than this one and that kind of thing then yeah it's 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 valuable to to keep to keep testing in that um, you just have to look at what are you getting out of what you're spending that day are you getting anything out of it or is you just just blowing money and and um, you know waiting for things to start converting uh, I, I think at, at any point even if an, an, a, a campaign is not converting uh, you should you should be collecting some sort of data, just something. You should you should be looking at, um, you know, what what the users are doing on your landing page or opt-ins or or you know something like that. So, so as long, yeah, basically as long as you're, as long as it's the data that you're getting is is worth it, then I you know it's it's worthwhile to keep going. Is there a good minimum budget that you should be prepared to start out with? Yeah, I I would say that um, of course it depends on the campaign, but but and you can get started with with most affiliate campaigns on, on a budget of you know twenty to forty or fifty dollars a day. Uh, that that will that will you know give you pretty good results within you know a couple weeks. You can do quite a bit of testing with that, or even less. Maybe you can do twenty dollars a day, even. Uh, I've seen, I've seen some, you know, some some people that they prefer just to sort of slow roll it like that, and and you know, just gather the data over time. It's probably better anyway. It's just so you're not. Uh, I, I've seen some people they just like to shotgun it and, and spend a thousand dollars in an hour and get their data that way. That's that might not be as as accurate as if you were spending less over time. So so I. Facebook is typically uh, you can you can you can gather data and, and test your campaigns on a on a pretty small budget. I got one here. I'm not sure I understand, but um, someone's asking what's the best revenue or what's the difference between paying to run ads. Or the best revenue between paying to run ads versus promoting ads from networks for free. What's the benefit to paying? Um, I'm not sure how you pr promote free ads on Facebook. Yeah, uh, I, I'm not. I'm not sure of, uh, what what is meant by the question. Uh, maybe uh, could be, you know, it might mean uh, content on Facebook pages and uh, you know. Facebook locations and other things like that. Uh, that's that's what's referred to as organic Facebook uh, traffic. But you're not supposed to stick ads in your organic traffic in Facebook, correct? I mean, they're not looking. They're they're kind of keeping an eye on that, where all you're doing is promoting stuff as opposed to putting useful content out there. They want but, the content for the a, user. Right. That is allowed, uh, but you still need to drive. Uh, users there and if your content is poor then then your users are you know you're going to not have as much volume so i think i think there's value to doing both and i i think a, a presence on facebook requires you to do both paid and organic We got a couple of people asking if you can put up. Uh, I know it's kind of difficult. <laughs> can you put up a, a Facebook ad or an example of one on a Facebook page on your own or something? An indication. I guess people are a little. Some people are not sure what a Facebook ad looks like. Oh yeah, sh um, sure. Uh, let's. Uh, all right. Let's open this up here. I'll, I'll show you show you one of my. One of my ads here. Take a look at my account. Here's some that I just that I created promoting our, our own app here. Um, and I you know I created these through through our ad G. So um, here we go. 
Facebook affiliate. You have a, a small image, 110 by 80 here, and a headline. They recently reduced the, the body content to 90 characters here. And uh, I'm, I'm targeting uh, these keywords here, the hashtag keywords. Uh, this is this is pretty useful uh, if you're uh, looking for way, new ways to target. What the hashtag keyword will do is, is is basically like a category. So it's because I have affiliate marketing here. You don't necessarily have to have that on your profile. You could be a member of a affiliate marketing group, or you could have liked uh, like a network page or something like that, um, and they'll figure out that. That you're interested in affiliate marketing, and so you, you get a pretty large section of the audience uh, that way. So when you're doing your own ads, uh, it, this is a pretty useful uh, technique to use. Um, and here I'm I'm just targeting uh, different countries, same keywords. Uh, you'll notice that the click-through rate is not very good on these ads. Um, it could just be the audience or it just could be uh, the ad. Uh, so something like this, 0.033 is not a very good click-through rate. You, you want to shoot for at least 0.07 or something like that. I think that's that's the average on Facebook. They were saying that's, that's the overall average, somewhere around 0.06 to 0.07. Um, you want to test creatives and try to get something at least that Preferably, preferably over 0.1 percent. Then, then you will get your click costs down low enough, you know, to make to make a lot of campaigns profitable. Now, one of the features uh, you provide is the ability to create ads within the uh, API. Are you constantly updating the creatives uh, and coming up with new ways to present things? Yeah, so that's that's one thing that uh, that can easily be done in the app. Uh, I can't believe this thing is, is still uh, this slow here, but um, what you can do is go in and you you could go into your ad and create a similar ad, and then from there you'll be able to just uh, you can say I want to create new creatives and just enter them in here, and uh, basically you can further split test your creatives uh, using your, your, your targeting that you had before and that kind of thing. So that's typically something I'll do. I'll go in and I'll, I'll just be constantly testing new creatives. Um, that's probably the most important thing to getting a, to getting a, um, a profitable campaign going is just getting the right image and creative going. So yeah. And you know, we've got somebody asking, how do people get those five cent clicks? <laughs> Is there a specific <laughs> trick to getting <laughs> cheap clicks other than uh, well, useless yeah. material? Yeah, you're never going to get it just doing a broad audience uh, targeting. You're never, it's, there's no way, I don't care what you put in the ad, you know, um, you have to, you have to have very specific targeting. There's some tricks that a lot of people use. They'll like they'll use the workplace. Um, they'll target specific workplaces and use that in the the creative. Um, that's one trick that you know people use to get a really high CTR. Anything related to keywords. Um, uh, that's that's really the only way that you're going to get that that super cheap traffic that uh, you know you're paying pennies for. Um, and and it just depends on on what you're promoting and and if you can make that work. Uh, some people have an idea of uh, of targeting uh, like workplaces and and offering alternatives to working there, like scholarships or something like that. So so that's you know you get creative and and, and target different keywords and. Try to try to get it in the ad copy, and, and that's really the way you, you do it. Right, and I think the key is Facebook uh, will determine how much the traffic to give you at what price. Uh, if you're bidding cost per click, they still calculate it on their end 
as the cost per thousand. So if you have a very high click-through rate, you can get low bids as, as, as a result and still get a lot of traffic. Have you guys got anything so in your crystal crystal ball as to how you see Facebook developing uh, with with advertising strategies and growth in in promotions over the next year since they've been throwing money hand over fist at uh, all kinds of new developers out there? Yeah, the, I, I guess the crystal ball says that uh, they're going to keep they're going to keep pushing for. Uh, you know, ads that are very are social in nature. So, they basically want their ads to be content, and and if you can figure out how to how to incorporate that in an affiliate campaign, then you'll do very well on, on there. I, I also think there's definitely um, uh, a, a big uh, there's there's room on on Facebook ad, uh, their ad platform for traditional ads. Um, I, there's no way that they're going to be they're going to be able to support the company on, on just social ads. It's just not going to happen. So there's there's going to be a lot of ads going to external websites and that, and um, you know a little bit of both. I think I, I don't think it's going to go one one direction or the other. I think you're just going to try to incorporate both of them. Yeah, they got a hell of a big st <laughs> stockholder unit to uh, appeal to so they're going to have to get their revenues up as high as they can um if you were going to give somebody starting out on this three things to keep in mind before they get started what would be the most important three points or steps that they have to focus on uh that's a good question um uh like, well like we were saying testing testing is very important uh getting Getting, getting the right creatives and, and that is, is ultimate importance. Um, they, they used to have ads where you, now they require images. They used to have ads where you didn't have to put an image and they just got rid of it completely because it worked so horribly that nobody ever used it. So it makes, makes all the difference. People are on Facebook are chatting with their friends and doing, doing all that kind of thing and you need to grab their attention. You're basically, you know, like someone was saying, you're trying to flash the laser pointer in their eyes or something and just get their attention any way you can. Um, that's that's basically what you have to do. So creating an, an eye-catching uh, creative is, is very important. Uh, and I would say that um, I wouldn't try to, to sell directly off of Facebook. Uh, I would, it, you'd be, um, it's much better just to, you know, collect their, their email information, like have an opt-in form and then you can market to them uh, later on, and that way you don't have to worry about their policies. Who cares? You have their email. You can you can send them whatever you want you know, within the can spam or whatever, and um, you don't have to worry about their their uh, Facebook policies because you're you're not dealing with them anymore. So that's a much better way of of running campaigns on there. Um, just uh, collecting. Collecting email information, or or just getting generating leads as opposed to trying to generate sales uh, right right off of Facebook, I think works much better. Should you take uh, a cue from the the Fortune 500 companies that are all over Facebook these days and the way they're presenting themselves? Uh, they're follow us on Facebook and they're putting information on Facebook. There are some ads there, but it's more about an extension of branding. Yeah, I think I think the important thing is uh, if you're offering something something useful to them, like like a coupon or something like that, like a discount. Um, yeah, then then it, it's they have an incentive to to sign up or like like the page or enter their email or whatever it is. Just as long as you're you're offering something to them and it's interesting. Content, you know, like a funny video or something. Video marketing will also works well. But that's something you might want to try. A video landing page works great. People are sitting there; they they want to be entertained. They don't they don't want to, you know, they're not they're not after um, just you know bland marketing messages. They'd much rather have a have a you know an interesting video to watch. So uh, as long as it's interesting content, I think. 
think that's an important thing. And this notion that Facebook uh, policy doesn't allow free trials, do you think that's them trying to, uh, for want of a better word, reduce the sort of spam aspect uh, of content on their pages? Not giving away free stuff, uh, free trials as, as a means to capture uh, traffic. Well, you can you can still uh, you can still get free trials on there. Um, it, it's it's not uh, a business model that they completely want to get rid of. Uh, it just I guess it's the way that it's promoted on there. Uh, you know, I I had I recently just put up some ads for. Uh, you know, like one of those skincare products that you see on every affiliate network, and it, and I got it approved. Uh, you know, not not much problems. So um, you can it's within their terms. If you look at their terms of service, it says as long as you explain, you know that uh, that they're going to get billed for whatever whatever the terms are. As long as that's the thing about Facebook, they just want you to be upfront with 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 what you're asking for. So you can. You can have a one of those, um, like an email submit or whatever. Uh, as long as you explain that they have to fill out these these offers to get what they're what they're hoping for, then they'll approve it. Um, so you just have to be clear about uh, what what the offer is. That's all. <laughs> I don't know if we should ask you this, but we. Hey, listen, you showed up. GM made a big deal that they dropped their $10 million Facebook ad campaign. <laughs> they weren't using your tool, were they? <laughs> <laughs> no. I, well, I, I read a couple articles about that, and, and they, just, they just didn't do a very good job, that's all. Uh, you know, a lot of these bigger companies think you're just going to spend a bunch of money and, and plaster your, your name all over there and, you're going to get good results. No, it's not going to work. You have to, to um, like I was saying, have something interesting to say on there. And uh, a lot of companies do it right, and they have great results. Like they, they just, um, I forget what was the example, Budweiser or it was Heineken, one of them had a campaign <clears throat> on here. with a, It was a funny video, and, and they ended up just getting all kinds of, of, uh, of new uh, subscribers to a uh, newsletter uh, for very cheap. So it just depends on on uh, how how well it's executed. It's not it wasn't our app that did that. <laughs> yeah, your app doesn't create the ads out of thin air. People have there's input required, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, now, here's a question that I guess relates more to Facebook itself, but as an affiliate, do we have to have individual Facebook accounts or can we just run fan pages? And I've heard that discussed before, uh, that you you can have as many fan pages as you want, but you have to be a little careful about having too many varieties, don't you? Uh, I I think I don't think there's any, any sort of uh, limitations on that. I think you're you're good to go. So I can be me, and I can have fifteen different affiliate fan pages. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, a lot of companies will have will have a, a page for for every location that they're in. They'll have they'll have many of them. So um, I don't think there's a problem with that. Well, thanks very much, gentlemen. And I uh, find it interesting to note that uh, your history with Facebook goes back to uh, before they actually went public, I guess, right? So you've been at this for a while. And uh, now that they are public, they're going to have to rely more and more on ad revenue. So somebody who's inside the ad for infrastructure with them has obviously got a little bit of a lead in over people who are just looking at it from the outside and trying to figure out how to get around the corner. Yeah, and, and it's it's also good for, for the advertisers as well, you know, that um, they're going to want to open up their their advertising as much as possible just to generate as much, much revenue. So, um, so hopefully that uh, 
you know, with their mobile advertising that's coming out, um, it'll it'll mean a lot of opportunities for affiliates in that. Well, judging from the amount of stuff I see people doing on tablets and phones in public places, uh, it's no wonder newspapers are going out of business. So Facebook is uh, going to be taking over from them, I suppose, pretty soon. Well, uh, I'll, uh, gentlemen, uh, I invite you to add something to close us out. Uh, give us a final suggestion or an instruction or uh, do not do this if you don't want to lose big money, and then uh, we'll move on. Uh, well, how about this? Uh, go if you, we're going to put out um, a best practices guide um, to, to anybody who wants it. Uh, so I would say um, just go on asuji.com and 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 sign sign up for the newsletter there, and, and we'll we'll send it over to you, and the, it'll have a lot more more details about what what you should do and what you should. Uh, that's probably the best best thing to do. Or just send us an email if you don't want to sign up for it. Admin at adsu.com. Okay, so we we sort of didn't solicit membership or gave them an option for not <laughs> opting in. That's always a good. Yeah, that, that's good. That's good. Yeah, yeah. FTC won't complain about that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thanks again, gentlemen. Really appreciate the uh, information, the time you took. And as always, uh, very useful information and best of luck. Check it out. Uh, it's a very intuitive piece of software, and it looks like it does some very useful things for people trying to manage campaigns in what is, let's face it, a pretty confusing arena at times. Facebook is not the normal advertising arena that we've been playing in for the last number of years. So you better get on the inside and figure out where you're going. You guys take it easy, and thanks, everybody, for showing up tonight. Thank you. And thanks. maybe we should thanks put so that much. up one more time, the uh, link, if you want, to uh, our members to go and take a look at it or put the uh, page up if it'll work for us. Absolutely. Sure, yeah. There you go, at cg.com. That's all. Just go there, and or, this, or you can go to the offer here, offer, slash offer vote. There you have it, folks. Check it out. We'll see you guys on the next one. Good night, everybody.